Hello and welcome to Social Buzz Chat here on YouTube. This evening I'm joined by Karen Fuel. Hello. Thank you for joining me. Um, we just had a chat online about trends within the food industry and how brands kind of use psychology in a way to make you share your food online. Um, we'll be talking about a few questions along those lines in a few minutes time, but first, Karen, introduce yourself. How did you get into social media and tell us a bit about Digital Blonde. Okay, so, well, as you know, my name's Karen, but actually most people call me DB or Digital Blonde, which is actually the name of the business, but it was a, always a nickname of my friends. How did I get into social? Well, from the food perspective, uh, I was brought up in the hospitality industry, so I was taught to love food um, and enjoy the kind of eating out experience all the time. For social, probably the first time that I really saw the benefit is I climbed Kilimanjaro and did a big fundraiser and I used storytelling techniques and, and social to raise eight and a half grand and that's, that's when, incredible. I, when I realised social is quite powerful because yeah. that was my only way really that I um, did any fundraising. How did you promote it on social? What did you do in particular? Uh, mostly just telling the story through blogs, uh, little videos uh, and just going from the day that I bought my first pair of walking boots, went out on my first walk all the way to actually the day I reached the summit and uh, celebrated. Or you celebrated. Or you said, get me off this mountain. <laughs> get me off this mountain, I am done here. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that we asked during the chat earlier um, was the following one, and it's kind of related to narrative in a really obscure way. We were asking what's the real reason that people really share food porn. And linking it to the narrative quite vaguely here, I'm, I'm honest, the narrative of sharing your meal is, in my point of view, it's one, to show off, two, to be like, I'm here, and three, to show the remnants of what's left behind. Which in my case is usually nothing, it's just an empty place, or if it's a burger place, just wrappers and ketchup sachets spewed everywhere. But, nice. sorry, that's my, nice. Nice. that's my personal way of eating, I'm a messy <laughs> eater. Um, what's, to you, like, what's the real reason that people share images on Instagram with the hashtag food porn on Twitter? Why, why do people do it? So we were being asked this question all the time by our clients. Uh, and so I linked up with Natalie Nahai, the web psychologist, and we looked into this. And uh, what we found was the number one reason why people shared images of food online was because they were proud of the food they'd made. So this was about in and out of the home. The second was to record an event or special occasion. And so it's all about bringing back nostalgia. And the third was because the food looked beautiful, like a piece of art. But then we... Um, we have kind of missed a trick here, but thankfully at the end of the research we had an unprompted question and just saying, look, just tell us what is the real reason why you share images of food online, well, you know, why do you do this big food porn thing? And 80% of people totally unprompted said we do it to show off. Oh yeah, so we'd like, one of the stats that came up during the chat was that there's 86 million images with the food porn hashtag. It's mental. It's, it is mental, but... I don't share that many pictures of food online, I should, but what photos do you share? What, what do you believe makes a perfect hashtag food porn photo, like from both a psychology point of view and from just a you point of view? So I, I think I'm quite an interesting, quite an interesting case because I have, uh, I've been taught to love food, but I've also had an eating disorder. So I've kind of been through all the range of emotions of mm -hmm. love and hate of food. And I can see guilt in my own posting. So sometimes I actually post uh, food instead of eating it, but also because I'm celiac and I eat gluten, often I post pictures of food, of other people's food because it looks better than mine and it's almost like I'm consuming it. Mm. But I'm sure that it, there's not those kind of deeper psychological reasons with everybody. Some people it is literally, that they just, they just want to show off and you've got those half eaten burgers. It's not about the food, it's mm. the place that they're in. And so there has been research around, you know, can you tell somebody has an eating do disorder as a result of their Instagram feed? And there was evidence to su suggest, yes, you can. Can you expand more on that with the evidence or am I really putting you on the spot here? <laughs> or is it something we can put in the comments we below? We can definitely put it, yeah. I've, um, I've, I've got references to all sorts of things around people's emotional relationship with food and sort of stuff we've studied as well. So yeah, I'll give you a number of links so we can put it in the It's not that all of this is just apparent through social media yeah. that you can tell that somebody's got an eating disorder and more just through 
in a way, just through hashtag food porn. Yeah, yeah. That's, that to me, that's crazy. Yeah, but, but I mean, these days, like, I, I don't, I'm far from having an eating disorder these days, and so I'm really lucky because we work on big chef competitions and we spend a lot of time with, with famous chefs. And so a lot of my, I guess, my own Instagram feed is actually me showing off about the amazing places that I've got to eat and the experiences that I had. You're and one I'm of them. as guilty as everyone. <laughs> guilty as charged, guilty as charged. Be like, look where I'm eating, look, at, look where I am. Um, the final question that we have is something that's like, it annoys me quite a lot. And so here's an example of what I do before I even turn the question is, I put my mobile phone in the middle of a table, I put a pint glass on top of it. And if during whenever I, I take the pint glass off it and I check my phone, I have to buy everyone around. So far it's cost me around 500 pounds worth in <laughs> pints this year and we're only in March. So the question that I'm gonna to pose to you now is as digital, oh no. I can't read my own writing. As digital individuals, oh, actually, no, that's, that's wrong completely. As digital starts to take over our lives, do you feel we need to change our social etiquette? Okay, so the hospitality industry are totally divided on this, as in, mean, for example, whether we should have phones at the table. Uh, is digital brilliant at driving customers, but are we actually doing it to the detriment of our dining out experience? So back in September, we looked at this and I hosted uh, a 40, no, 25 people on a, on a tube carriage of all locations. Stissy's tube carriage decided to invite everybody along for a dinner. They knew they were taking part in an experiment, but I created a fake one and they made them think it was all over. And then um, it was a four course uh, dining experience. So after the first course, I kind of stood up and went, sorry guys, I kind of made that little experiment up. This is a real experiment. On, in the middle of the table, there's a box please lift open that box and everyone place your mobile phones inside okay. and there was kind of some people that were like oh phew brilliant I could you enjoy my evening and others are literally I can't do it let me to reply to everything some people even got annoyed like how who does Karen think she is who, how, who do you think she is to take our phones off us but the reason why we did this is there's um, a piece of academic research done in the States called the iPhone effect that looked at how our emotional engagement drops when we pick up the mobile phone. So if I picked up my phone now, it basically yeah. gives you permission to pick up your phone. So like if I just, if yeah, you're I'm talking now and, and I'm I just, might grow, just grab carry mine. on, just keep talking, it's fine. <laughs> I'm totally distracted. My emotional engagement has now dropped and it will take us once you put your phone well, down. Yeah, of course, carry on, yes. When you put on. your phone down, it'll take us at least 10 minutes to get back to where we started. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't go another 10 minutes, we've only got two left. So if, we, so if you're out on a dining out experience and people are constantly picking up their phone, you're never getting that same emotional engagement that you would have whilst eating with friends and family at home yeah. or, or in a restaurant. The restaurant industry relies on word of mouth promotion as a way of bringing in new custom. So if you've not enjoyed that experience as much because you're so distracted with your phone, are we actually getting to ourselves to a situation where potentially we're ruining the, the kind of the, the, the word mm. of mouth marketing that's happening for the sake of encouraging people to do it, to share their images of food, because we know that helps drive custom too. And so yeah. I'm totally divided on it. There's times I think, it, you know, it's good and I'm guilty of food porn, but I'm also from a family where my mum kind of says, right, it's a family occasion, everyone phones, I don't want them at the table. And, and I, and I recognise that the, there's an importance of that. It's good to know that there's a division. So with that division, I'm going to turn myself to this camera. Answer below in the comments, like, do you feel that restaurants should not impose a ban, but kind of be like, could you just put your phones away, you know? put your phones away and have a conversation or do you think they should just mind their own fucking business i can swear it's all right um thank you very much for joining me this evening i'll give you a good old firm handshake now um if you'd like to tell people who you are again down that camera there and your twitter address yeah so address. karen fuel at digital blonde on twitter a um, number of the pieces of uh research referred to you'll either find them on our slideshow my slideshow account or we'll put them in the, uh, the follow-up blog. We'll put them in the blog and in the comments, in the comments, in the description below. And obviously, if you want to engage with myself and Karen, I'm Bacon Chin, your digital blonde. Um, big thank you to Sam Scott, who's behind the camera this evening. He's here without any food, which is quite ironic because <laughs> yeah, we've just been really talking about now. food. He's pulling a sad face, but you can't see it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you enjoy this show, we've got loads more that way. I think that's how it goes on YouTube. All the other ones are that way or yeah, they're that way, whatever. Um, we'll see you next week for another episode of Social Buzz Chat here on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Should we do more handshakes? Do more handshakes. <laughs>
I remember like, have, like a journalist saying their username, a Twitter handle on screen was actually seen as a, a really bad thing. Uh, and I saw, I saw people get in trouble for it, Adam. In 2006?